how to facilitate productive meetings with Microsoft Whiteboard. So there's an awesome meeting facilitation tool built right into Microsoft Teams and hidden in plain sight. I'm talking about Whiteboard. We've all seen it either as a tab in a meeting calendar or as an option when we're sharing our screen. But few people actually bother to use it, at least in my organization anyway. And this is unfortunate since this hidden gem is actually pretty useful. So in this video, let's explore what Whiteboard is, how we can access them, and review some of its tools and features. What is Microsoft Whiteboard? Microsoft describes its Whiteboard as the collaborative digital canvas in Microsoft 365 for effective meetings and engaging learnings. I'm sure all of us at some point have participated in a meeting where a facilitator used a physical Whiteboard markers, and perhaps sticky notes to collect ideas from the group, then edit and rearrange them until we ended up with an output that everyone agreed on. Whether for work or for class projects, these sessions tended to be highly collaborative and engaging. And they were well suited for things like brainstorming, problem solving, and project planning. While Microsoft Whiteboard is just a digital version of that, it offers many tools for the meeting facilitator, including an impressive list of templates to help bring structure to our meetings. And you can see some examples here. And most importantly, it allows us to have these highly collaborative working sessions virtually with remote team members. How can we access the whiteboards? These whiteboards are accessible through its app in the office.com homepage. If you don't see it, you can go through the app launcher. Here you'll see the list of all whiteboards you have access to. Some of these I created, so I can delete them if I choose. Some were created by others, so although I can't delete them, I can leave them so that they disappear from my list. Because the Whiteboard app is tightly integrated with Microsoft Teams, more often you'll be accessing them through the Teams meetings and channels. In Teams, if you go to the calendar and select a meeting, you'll see the Whiteboard tab on top. If you click on it, it'll bring up your whiteboard. This is a past meeting, so there's content in the whiteboard already. But for a new meeting, it'll create a new blank whiteboard. In a Teams channel, you'll need to click on the plus sign and choose whiteboard from the list of apps. Then you can name your whiteboard and save. So how do we use it? Let's start a new whiteboard from the app page. The first thing we should do is name the whiteboard. Click on this dropdown, then type in the new name. If you create a whiteboard as part of a Teams meeting, it'll just inherit the meeting name so you won't need to rename. Now before we get started, the whole point of using a whiteboard is for collaboration. If you start your whiteboard from the app, you can share it with others. Just copy the link and send to your team members via email or a Teams chat. But if you start your whiteboard within a Teams meeting or a Teams channel, it'll automatically be shared with the members of those meetings and channels. However, you still do have controls over whether the participants can edit the whiteboard. Now let's look at the interface to see what's going on. To the left, we have three buttons. The top is for select, the middle is for inking, and the last is for creating. The select tool is just that. It's used to select objects on the board. Let's add a quick object here. Notice that our cursor is an arrow. This means we can select the objects and move it around. But if we click and hold the mouse on the canvas, the cursor changes to a hand. Now we can pan around the canvas. Let's move on to the inking tools now. When we click on it, a toolbar appears. It has three pens, a highlighter, an eraser, and a lasso. The ruler isn't currently available. Obviously, you're going to use these tools to write, draw, and mark up documents. Let's grab the black pen and start drawing. I'm using my mouse, by the way. You can click on any of the pens to change the thickness and the color. 
You can even choose arrow tips on the line if you want. Essentially, you can customize three of your favorite pen setup to appear in this toolbar. Similarly, you can change the thickness and color of your highlighter also. Notice that when I draw basic shapes like a circle, triangle, or a rectangle, they're replaced by an enhanced shape. This is because I have enhanced shapes turned on. You can toggle this feature off and on in the settings menu here. And while we're here, we can format our background with different colors and patterns if you choose. Right-clicking anywhere on the board will show the context menu where you can add a sticky note or a text box. We can also paste an object from the clipboard or clear the entire canvas. I'm going to cancel out of this. And of course, at any point, we can click the Select tool to select any of these hand-drawn objects to move around or resize. And when we select an object, we see a little toolbar appear. The toolbar has slightly different options for different objects, but by and large, they are the same. Here you can delete or copy the selected object. And for certain drawings, you can convert it to shape. For example, if we didn't have the enhanced shape enabled and drew a circle, then decided we want to enhance the shape, we can select and convert to shape. You can also include an alt text for your drawing if you need. Let's move to these two shapes. If we go to more options, we can bring the selected shapes to the front or send to back. And we can lock them in place so that they move together with the canvas. And if we want the objects to move independently, we can unlock it again. And lastly, we have the Create Tools. You can do a lot of cool things here. First is the Notes tool. You can add a sticky note or note grids. Let's add a single note. We can change the color and type in them. Your teammates can then react to your note by selecting any one of these reactions. If you want multiple sticky notes to be grouped together, you can add a note grid. You can name the grid, add new notes to the grid, change their color, type in them, and add reactions. Next, you can add text, resize, and change the font color. You can add shapes, Resize. We already saw how to do this, but if you want to maintain the aspect ratio, make sure to hold on to the shift key when you resize. Of course, you can change the fill color as well as the border color. Let's delete them. You can add reactions. We just saw that certain objects like the sticky notes have reactions built in. But for other objects, you can drag these icons over it. You can insert images from your PC. The Bing image feature isn't available on the web version of Whiteboard yet. And Documents. The file type is limited to PowerPoint and PDF. When you select your file, you can choose which pages to insert. I'm going to clear the canvas since it's starting to get a little crowded. Now saving the best for last is the templates. There are quite a few really useful templates for everyone. I think these tools are especially useful for meeting facilitators and project managers. You can very quickly launch any one of these templates to collaborate with your teams. For things like brainstorming and problem solving, this is perfect. Let's actually click and add this brainstorm template. 
You may need to scale up your canvas. You can use the controls here on the bottom right, or you can use the mouse wheel while holding on to the control key. Now your meeting participants can all contribute their ideas on the sticky notes. And when all ideas have been collected, you as a facilitator can review with the team to categorize and prioritize those ideas. As you can see, there's a lot you can do with this whiteboard web app. And there's actually a Windows app version that you can download from the Microsoft Store that has even more features. So you should check that out if you're interested. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video and learned something useful, make sure to give it a like. And if you enjoy tutorials like this, be sure to check out some of my other videos. Thanks.